This is the original panel my Luscom came with, and it is pretty awful, as you can see here. This video will be mostly about uh, the new panel I put in, but also I'm going to review some of the things that I've done to the plane to upgrade it before I put the new panel in. These are new LED landing lights slash taxi lights. Those are one of the first upgrades I made to the plane. These are nav lights slash strobe lights. These let me do my nighttime training in the Luscom. This is a new alternator, which gave good power at low RPM to the lights. And that's the old generator next to the new alternator. That's the lightweight starter. And that's the old pull starter next to the new starter. And those are those two new components installed in the engine. That's the remote oil filter, and I made a separate video on that, getting into more detail. Makes oil changes nicer and quicker and easier. And those are the old seats. I've really redone the interior. That right seat was much taller than the left seat, and that's the reason. Those springs, kind of crazy. That's the seat back. I replaced all the foam, and most of the interior is leather now. The seats are leather, the roof, the spar carry-throughs, the doors and the kick panels, all leather. So I replaced all this junk. I used that wooden framework for the rear of the seats. There's one of the doors, the right door and the right kick panel. And there's the memory foam I used for the seats. And there's the new seats. Much, much nicer interior than it used to be. This isn't an upgrade, this is just looking into the wing. There are no ribs in this wing, which is kind of fun. That's the hubcap, one of the hubcaps. The middle's all messed up. I turned some big aluminum washers on my lathe and epoxied them in place to clean up those hubcaps. This is the rear of the crankcase, and the two magnetos go into these two spots here, and they're gear-driven. And those got overhauled by my mechanic. They've got to be overhauled every 500 hours. And I was surprised and excited to find out that basically these are like distributors on an old car. On the V8, on our 65 Dodge when I was growing up, these just reminded me of that. They've got a cap and points and a condenser, so really just like a distributor on an old car. So that was kind of fun to discover. And I put new grips on there, which are very comfortable. I really like those. This is the firewall and underneath the old panel. So now we're getting into the stuff I did to the panel. That's the glove box. I kept the door. I kept a few different things that I that I knew would work fine on the new panel. That's the glove box and switches that weren't even used. That's the fuel tank and the old gauge because the new senders went in there. Old controls and the floor and the firewall. Again, I repainted all that, cleaned it all up. This is a tool I made to help get the nuts off the back of that horizontal piece there where the cables go through. And I'm cutting out the old panel there. This is a new panel blank. I think that was 400 bucks. So I've done some of the layout for my new panel. This C-channel is a stiffener that goes back behind here directly underneath or behind this lower edge and it butts up against these sunken areas obviously it can't come forward and touch these raised areas um, but there will be um, some rivets that go through uh, this flange here on the bottom of this there's flange that's bent over on this area this area and this area and these two outside areas will have rivets going through into this. Um, I'll have some cables going through on this side into holes like these here. And there's a nut on the back, so that'll add some more rigidity. The throttle will go through the middle, and that'll also hold things together. And there's behind that a 45 degree stiffener that goes at an angle up toward the firewall and ties into the engine mount where the 4130 chromoly tubes come down from the wings and tie in. So, and then on the edge of this, on both sides, there'll be rivets that tie it to the airframe, or to, to the sides of the fuselage. So that ties everything together. Um, but because this raised area, 
causes space between the C channel and the front here. I can't put uh, the breakers in line with the C channel because they wouldn't reach, they wouldn't be able to reach the front of the panel. And this large one, for example, wouldn't even fit in there. These, the rest of them would, but they still couldn't reach that gap and come through the front of the panel. So they will go in this row above the C channel. And the, the main thing is I need to make room for this large one. This is for the alternator and you can see that I line that up and it just clears the top of this and it'll fall below the radio and the ADS-B. So that's what determined the vertical orientation of this line where the breakers will go. And I've got nine breakers set up um, but I'm going to drill ten holes here that'll leave room for a little expansion. And uh, then the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm gonna I've got uh, four switches that I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna install six switches just also for expansion. And then so below here I'll have labels, and I'm not sure how I'll label this. Um, probably just all below. And I could even have for if there's two words that need to be used to describe the breaker, I could have those on two lines. I've got a lot of room here, so I'll probably put all the labels below and labels below these six switches here. Um, the way to drill holes in aluminum, it's really gummy and soft, so a standard drill bit really catches on it, so it's tough to drill. So these step drill bits do a really good job and make it easy. And you've got all these different sizes built in um, got, I've got four of them. This large one I will use to drill the holes for these for the two USB ports. This one will go over here. The other one will go closer to the opposite side. Not all the way on the opposite side, but toward the other side. And then I'll use one of these smaller bits. I'm not sure which one yet uh, to drill the holes for the breakers and the switches and what I'm going to do first is just measure measure the diameters of the parts of these that will go through the panel and find the appropriate size step and drill those holes um, But actually, the thing I'll do before that will be to use a scribe and an auto punch to mark each of those holes. All right. Uh, and then there's more layout I'll do later. I'll put in the USB. Um, this is a light indicating if the alternator is providing power or not. Starter button master switch. I'm going to reuse the old one. I'm going to keep a couple things from the old panel just, just to keep a couple few original things. Well, this, this light is original. I think this is kind of cool. It's got a little shutter mechanism inside so you can change the brightness. Anywho, that's step one. All right, this guy measures 369 thousandths. three-eighths of an inch is 375 and that's this is three-eighths well it says three-eighths and that's about 370 thousandths so I taped it off so I don't go too far it's the third shelf so I should uh, feel three separate breakthroughs here and that should work nicely for that guy. This is the first one. Let's give it a try. One, two, three. 
very, very clean hole there. I got a 2x4 behind there. If you were wondering if I had anything to back it up when I was using the auto punch. By the way, this is a brand new Starrett auto punch. Seems to work nicely. Alrighty. I'll need to deburr all these holes. And, oh, fits perfectly. Very nicely. Alright, 7 sixteenths is the magic number. So I'm just going to drill the rest of these. Down to that blue tape, 7 sixteenths. Actually, I don't think I'm going to drill into that wood. I think for this, for the auto punch, or for the center punch, that's that was good to have. But for the drilling, I think it just makes makes life more difficult for no reason. A little, little elbow grease. Little elbow grease cleans that up. And then I'll probably probably hit that with some sandpaper too. Just to get a little finer edge. This is getting the rough stuff. All right, as close as I can figure it, these switches, that's 15, 30 seconds. So just the tiniest bit under half inch, although I'm not sure that's gonna fit. I may need just to go full blown half inch. Probably so. But the truth is that it still fit fine because like I said, that washer and the nut would cover up a minor, a minor sloppiness, or some minor sloppiness. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Or maybe, maybe that's fifteen thirty seconds. Oh, I think maybe I made the same mistake that I made before and didn't go. It was one shy, one level shy. 15, 30 seconds, I think that's right. Perfect. Huh. Well, awesome. All right, so this is the front central piece of the, this is the key mechanism of the, the switch, the magnetos on my plan. I think it's original and I thought it would be fun to keep that. Um, so the key, this is just the key mechanism. There's a big old fat piece about two inches in diameter that this activates or changes which actually determines which mag is switched on and if they're switched off hopefully. Um, 
and that's two inches in diameter, and the side of the fuselage here tapers in toward the nose. So clearance back behind this thing is important. And I've decided that I want about an inch and a half of clearance from the edge of the panel here to this switch. So it's going to go somewhere in there. And so what I'll do, I think, is just draw a line about a half inch from the edge. So I could fall anywhere on there. Or I, I may even come in a little more. I think maybe I'll try to put it equidistant between the edge and here. So I, just, I want at least an inch and a half there. If it's a little more, that's okay. So, that's kind of my minimum. Yeah, I like that pretty well, actually. That gives me a couple inches. That gives me about an inch and three quarters. Actually, I think I like that spot. So I think that's that's where I'll drill a hole, uh, and then these. Let's see, this starter will go here. This light then will go here. And then the master switch will go here. I might need to move my main instruments over just a hair. These don't take up much space, so this master switch switch can go pretty close to those. But maybe I'll move these over maybe a half inch or so to the right. Which is fine. Half inch will be okay. Um, let me see here. If I put that there, uh, that switch actually is about two inches in diameter. So I wanted to leave an inch and a half on this side because the fuselage tapers in. But on this side, since that thing really is only two inches, Really, these could be within about an inch or just a hair more than an inch. So, one there, one here, something like that. So really, this could be right about there and be fine and I wouldn't need to move these at all so I could leave them really where I wanted them and my thinking was that this left gauge would be centered along this crease here so I think this is going to work out nicely so then for starters we need to Measure this and get the right drill size. 0.733. So I'm going to need to go three quarters of an inch. This one goes right up to three quarters. You know, we got plenty of room above the radio here.
not quite there. I need to go all the way through. Just wanted to be cautious. Perfect. So, yeah, I don't think I want these all to skew upward like this. I think maybe I'll keep them lined up a little bit more toward the bottom here. So, I think what I'll do is I'll get this put in there and then maybe align these two so that they're more centered with with the master switch For this middle one, I want it. I want the hole to be about as big as this square. I don't think it matters if that shows through. Yeah, so there are a couple little notches, or not notches, but protrusions on either side of that switch, and I'm going to want those to fit up through there. That's plenty. I don't need to make that any bigger. Yep. That's, that's fine. All right, now that I've got that middle one, I'm going to put the mark the screw hole locations again, just so it's perfectly centered.
using the ruler here to try to make sure it's square to the panel. So let us good. Good, those, those are right on the money. So, and then I just need to drill a hole that is big enough for these screws. And I think I think this one will do it. It's interesting. Both of these drifted this way when I drilled them. But I think that's going to work just fine. In fact, if it bothers me that this hole is offset, the truth is I could drill it big enough that it doesn't show at all, and then it would not, um, doesn't, doesn't even matter. It would, uh, that way you wouldn't see that it's offset in the middle there. I might do that. One more, maybe. Alrighty. Now, it does not matter that these drifted a little bit. They line up fine. This looks square, and you can't see that the square back there, so there won't be any indication of alignment issues. I think that'll that'll look real nice. All right. Here's what I want to do. Okay, these are three and a about three and a quarter. So half of that is what's half of that? One and five eighths. So let's just go ahead and put these other ones right in the middle between the two and line them up well 
either line them up exactly with those or maybe a, maybe a quarter inch closer together. Yeah, I think I like that. Gives us a little bit of symmetry. All right, this may be a hair small, but we'll see. It's five eighths, so I'm gonna go five eighths, so I'll have two, two shelves left there. Yeah, five eighths. It's perfect. All right, so I drilled these, and then it became very obvious that this one is way off to the right. So even if you center punch these, these uh, step drills can very easily drift. So that's kind of irritating. But all of these things have, you know, a washer and a nut. So if the hole is a little too big, that could cover it up some. So what I will probably do uh, is take a file and try to move this hole this way some. If I feel like I'm going to have to enlarge the hole too much, then maybe I'll move this one a little bit to the right as well, split the difference. But this one's furthest off, so I'll try to see if I can get that one that way. And I could even just put a bigger washer on top to cover that up. And I could paint it blue like my panel is going to be and nobody would even know what happened. So, yeah, I'll probably do that. Probably just try to scoot this one left with a round file. Alrighty. So, not perfect, but I think it'll uh, it'll be okay. So I've got all my controls here. Uh, the sticks connect to these. I think that's called the yoke. And then this would go back to the elevator via cables. Um, got the brake, brake pedals here. Um, here's one of the one of the rudder pedals and here's the other rudder pedal so these are two two separate shafts that mount um, in these two guys right here uh, and these two things hold this yoke. It pivot, these ends pivot in these two guys. Alright, so I put two coats of paint remover on all these parts and got most of the paint off. 
And now I'm going to sandblast all of it. That should go pretty quickly since most of the paint's off. And then it'll be ready for the new paint, the blue color. All right, so I, I've done some work on cleaning this thing up. You can see, so let's come down here. You can see the paint remover is actually getting that paint off real nicely. And over here, it's coming off. Put a thin layer on there last week, it didn't do much on the, on the left side there. So I need to put more on there. And I'm also gonna plan on putting it on the floor because the same whatever I think was sprayed onto the firewall was sprayed on the floor, but it makes the texture rough and kind of collects junk. So I'm gonna try to clean that up and then repaint it before the new panel goes in. All right, so after more work on there, the floor's getting cleaned up. And this was a ton of work and the firewall's cleaned up and I took a wire wheel brush on a drill to that after the paint was removed. And there's the new paint. So it turned out pretty nice. And I'm continuing with, con continuing with the panel layout here, getting some things mounted in there for testing. Got the breakers and the switches. And again, I tried to keep some of the old stuff like the master switch and some different lights and all the cables. There's the controls repainted and reinstalled. And we made a new, or my mechanic made a new glove box, and it is monstrous. It's cavernous. All the old switches that were in there, they're gone. That was just junk. And I added these uh, nut plates to the back of the new glove box. That's my mechanic saying hello there. And I added two new vertical holes there because I had to keep the old altimeter and airspeed. There's the yoke that's facing back toward the rear of the plane. I'm just getting the controls reinstalled here after doing all the painting. And here we're fitting a C channel into the bottom of the panel. It goes on the rear of the panel, which I mentioned earlier. We did some drilling and clecoing and then riveting to get that in. And that really adds a lot of rigidity laterally across the cockpit. And got some holes there that the cables will go through. And here we're squeezing some rivets. You can see that near rivet is, is squished. And we just went all the way across there. Now this, this panel was a pain in the neck to get in. Boy, it was a tight fit. Um, and we're drilling and clecoing again for the panel. We did that stiffener at the bottom. Now we're doing the actual panel. So it's fit into place where we want it. And we are installing it permanently here. And we did normal, used a... Uh, Bucking bar, you can see the bucking bar on top there, which we put behind the panel and used a pneumatic rivet gun. So we did traditional riveting to install this thing, so it's permanent. And these are the fuel senders, which replace the old ones with the cork floats and the magnets and the just an analog dial. These are the same principle, though they fit right in the tank, and the wires go to the new instruments. So it's pretty sweet having digital fuel readouts on one of my new instruments, really nice. And I covered up, this used to be a little window where I could see the old fuel levels, but I made plates and covered those up. And there I am doing something or other. I have no idea what. All right, the panel was in, everything was cut and drilled, and I put some plastic and tape on things and painted it. Now these are some aftermarket lights that you can add to old gauges that don't have lights. They just go on the front of the gauge, then the gauge gets slipped into place from behind the panel, and you just use longer screws. You can see the light there on the rim. You just use longer screws, and they go right through the panel, through this thing, through the gauge, or into the gauge to hold it in place. And you can see one of them on the upper right there in place. And they're both of them are in place. And I'm just slowly adding new instruments and so on and so forth. These are all the breakers, and they're installed backwards, sticking out the front so we can fabricate bus bars and we just fit them right to those breakers and then flip the whole assemblies around once it's all fit and stick them in the back. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So there are the two breaker bars or bus bars are fabricated and some of the screws installed. 
So that just becomes a unit that you flip around and install from the rear in that orientation right there. Uh, one of these gets powered with the master, and then the other one, avionics are tied into, and it comes on next. Uh, these are some of the old wires. This is a bolt I modified to work with the cabin air. This is a knob for the altimeter that I made on my lathe. Did the knurling and the whole nine yards out of bar stock. And there it is in place. And it's a 544 thread, which was a pain in the neck to find out. It was a, a mystery. And just adding more things in place. Hooking things up. You can see the two instruments on the right. Those are my old instruments. And you can see them illuminated there. And putting the old radio and ADSB in, getting things set up here. Again on the right there, you can see those old, the new the old instruments lit up. And just things get a little messy as you go. This is a table for storing junk. And this is this is my mechanics hanger. And there's my airplane. Again, doing some setup here. This is the CGR30, which has temperatures and fuel levels and things like that. And I ended up using all six of those switches. And the AV30 on the left there. And I ended up using all ten holes for the breakers as well. I thought I'd have some extras of those. This is the intercom that I put in a while ago, actually. And those are all the original cables. I wanted to keep all those if I could. And on the left there, I did not use the old key. Just put a USB power there. And again, the cavernous glove box. And again, this is the old original panel before I show you the contrast between it and the new panel. And it's just absolutely awful, which I probably don't need to tell you. And in contrast, here is the new panel. And I've been on a huge cross country with it, 6,000 miles, flew the Missouri River and the Snake River over about three weeks or so, three and a half weeks. And I've made a lot of small trips since then, and I love it. Turned out great.